Hi, everybody, and welcome to Exegetically Speaking, a podcast of the friends and faculty of Wheaton College, Wheaton, Illinois, and the Lanier Theological Library in Houston, Texas. My name is David Capes, and I am the Senior Research Fellow at the Lanier Theological Library and a former dean up there in Wheaton at the School of Biblical and Theological Studies. Our purpose in these podcasts is really very simple. We want to promote the study of biblical languages, Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, so we can read the Bible more faithfully, study it more fully, and not just read it, but to live it. Joining me now on Exegetically Speaking is Dr. Phil Riken, who's the president of Wheaton College. He's a theologian in his own right. He's the author of books on, uh, let's see, 2 Peter and Galatians and... Song Not Second Solomon. Peter, but no, close sorry, enough. Second Kings. I was thinking Second Kings. <laughs> second okay. something. A second something. It's one of those second books, but uh, written a lot and staying ahead of the game. So it's great to see you, Mr. President. Yeah, thank you, David. It's always uh, flattering to be asked to do something again. So I'm glad to be uh, with you for exegetically speaking. What are we talking about today? I've got my Bible open here, David, to Psalm 112, verse 2. Um, this is a very significant verse to me personally. Because I was in the Modlin College Chapel in Oxford for a mm-hmm. Vesper service, and the choir was singing wow. Psalm 112, and it was at the time when we were expecting our firstborn. Wow. So this verse really had a big impact on me, something that I've prayed many times for my children, mm-hmm. and a verse I've thought about quite a bit. Let me just read it for us. So okay. it's Psalm 112, verse 2. It's a praise psalm. And it says of the man who fears the Lord, his offspring will be mighty in the land. Mm. The generation of the upright will be blessed. And that word mighty is a familiar Hebrew term, gavor, which is used in a variety of different places in the Old Testament, which we can talk about. But it's a mighty one. It's a person of influence and standing, a great Mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. I think great is a word that we might associate with this term. Well, the word hero comes to mind because I think there's a couple of places that it seems— Samson, for example. Samson, for yep, example, would be one. is described yep. as that. And the root itself is used in some places to mean the, the one who is in charge, the one who is who takes on leadership and such. Yeah, we might say, you know, there'd be a variety of different terms we'd use in English. He's the man. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of work these days on leadership studies, and I would love to see more kind of connection between what the biblical texts are saying and what these leadership studies are going after. So you've prayed this. You've made this a a matter of prayer for you and your family. Well, and part of the thought for it was that, you know, you want your children to count for the kingdom. Mm-hmm. So this idea that my sons and daughters would be people of influence that would make a positive spiritual impact in the world, that was what was really behind the prayer. There were a couple of things, though, that I, you know, it's like a lot of things. you got to be careful what you pray for. you got to be careful <laughs> what verse you think is important for you because it, it probably has depths of meaning you didn't anticipate. Surely. It didn't really occur to me, you know, if they're going to be mighty in the land, they're going to be pretty mighty in my own house. And <laughs> so that that's challenging when you've got, you know, gifted, strong-minded children, just, you know, what that demands of you as a parent to raise them in a God-honoring way. The other thing is that this person who has these children, Mm. who are mighty, who have this influence, what this scripture says about that person is this is somebody who is Mm God-fearing, who loves God's commandments, who is generous, particularly with the poor, who acts justly, who is so firm and steady in the Lord that he's not afraid of of bad news. What is demanded of this person is significant. You know, things that we're insufficient for, you know, things that we really need to be trusting in the righteousness of Christ for. But it's not just an easy promise to claim. It's actually a life to live. That's what this psalm puts in front of us. And you're inviting your children and you're inviting other people to watch my life. And you're going to find someone who fears God, someone who keeps the commandments, someone who is generous to the poor, etc. I mean, you just can't say, go do this without living it yourself. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. And it makes sense. It makes sense that the children who make a difference in the world, they've seen in their own home parents who model hospitality and generosity, who treat mm. people justly, who praise the Lord. I mean, it, it makes sense that if the, the only people that are really going to make an influence in the, in the world are people that have had that model for them. It doesn't have to be your parents. We're part of a, yeah. a Christian That's family, true. and we That's can true. learn from others as well. But I think this psalm 
gives an, a wonderful promise to Christian parents, but it also calls us to a high standard. You know, one of the things I find helpful about noticing this biblical term, Gavor, is other places where it is, is used. So another good example, which I think fits really well with the teaching of this psalm, is Boaz. Because if mm. you look at Ruth chapter 2, verse 1, different translations mm-hmm. say that he was mighty— or he was, you know, a man of standing, I think the right. NIV says, things like that. But it's right. this same term, and Boaz is a great example of all these things, a righteous man, very generous to the poor. I mean, he really mm. lived out. If you wanted an example of the kind of person of influence that Psalm 112 is talking about, yeah. it would actually be David's great-grandfather. Yeah, and maybe one of the reasons he's so great yeah, David himself is so great. Right, because he, he had this kind of legacy as well, and, and whether Psalm 112 is a psalm of David or not, it's in that sort of Davidic, Davidic uh, tradition, Davidic line, so yeah. it seems like a, it fits. Well, I'm encouraged as a dad and as a granddad and as a Christian today to think about these characteristics being qualities of my life and also extending to my children. And, just to take it to another level, also characteristics of our God himself. So, for example, when Isaiah makes his prophecies about this coming Prince of Peace, he Mm. is the mighty God. Right. He's the man. (laughs) And it's this same terminology here. And it's like a lot of, I mean, there's so many examples of this in the scriptures where terminology, titles, attributes are ascribed to God. Mm. And then very similar language, or in some cases identical language, is used to describe his people because he he wants us to live out his character, his Mm -hmm. generous mighty, great, wealthy, heroic character, we have a model to follow as, as we mm. try to live that kind of yeah. life. Paul talks about imitating Christ because Christ imitates God, right? And imitate me because I'm imitating both of those. So we want to claim that sort of life. Yep. And we want to see it in the lives of our children too. We do. Dr. Riken, thanks for being with us today on Exegetically Speaking. Thank you, David. Thanks to Ian Rosine, Rebecca Larson, and Silvio Vasquez, who helped us produce this podcast. Thanks as well to John Lanzma, our Wheaton-based director, who makes this podcast possible. We're grateful to Phil Keggy for our music. If you want to study biblical languages, then you need to consider Wheaton College. Whether you're an undergraduate or a graduate student, we have amazing programs, our first-rate faculty, and some of the best students in the world. So go to the website, www.wheaton.edu, and look for Modern and Classical Languages. Get started today. If you have questions about this or any of our podcasts, we'd love to hear from you. If you have suggestions or questions about any passage in the Hebrew Bible or Greek New Testament, send us an email, and we'll see if we can get one of our experts to weigh in on that for you. Our email is exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. That's exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. Thanks for listening.